The truth is, if you make an outline, no matter what level you're working at, what you write will be better in the long run. Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language podcast with Andrew Poudoua, founder of the Institute for Excellence in Writing, or as many like to say, IEW. My name is Julie Walker, and I'm honored to serve Andrew and IEW as the Director of Marketing. Our goal here is to equip teachers and teaching parents with methods and materials which will aid them in training their students to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. Hi everyone, this week we're going to switch it up a bit and play for you the audio portion of one of our IEW webinars. Because the webinar itself is over an hour, we're splitting it into two parts, but we'll post both of them this week. And we'll post any links or websites mentioned in this recording at IEW.com slash podcast. Enjoy! Well, good evening to everyone. This is Andrew Boudoua hailing from our Eastern Oklahoma headquarters at the Institute for Excellence in Writing. And I am happy to welcome you to our monthly webinar. We tend to do toward the beginning of each month. This, of course, is the last Monday in January, but we are looking forward into February for summarizing multiple references, unit six in our syllabus. So I thank all of you who've joined us. It's good to see people from all over the country and maybe a couple from outside the country. We are trying to help people in this series negotiate the nine structural models of the syllabus, the TWSS, Teaching Writing Instruction Style Syllabus. And one of the things we suggest is that you move through these units over the course of a school year. So in September, we addressed the Units 1 and 2, making notes and writing from notes. In October, we went over Unit 3, to, uh, retelling narrative stories and all the variations on that model that are possible. Unit 4, summarizing a reference. That's where we introduce the idea of limiting facts and the topic clincher paragraph model. And tonight, we're going to be mostly connected with Unit 4. The extension off that is what we're doing. Unit 5 is back on the creative fiction brain-based assignment side and writing from pictures. And then tonight, here we are at summarizing multiple references. This is where you not only have too many facts in one source text, you have too many source texts. And so it's, a, it's an added step in the whole process to limit and then limit again. And as you see on the one a month model, we're right about on schedule here, September, October, November, December, we generally consider that a difficult month to get a lot done. And so we bundle those together and then February unit six. Around the beginning of March, we will produce another webinar on inventive writing or what we used to call creative writing. April, the formal essay models, and in May, if you're still alive by then, we'll mention the critique, and then we will do some special things during the summer. But our goal here is to help people not get stuck. And I'm very happy to see comments like Jenny, who said that just started Unit 6, and that is a good sign because that means you're not getting stuck and one of the most important things with the Structure and Style program is to keep moving forward. If you have the old TWSS seminar workbook, the area that we're discussing would be on pages 37 to 46 plus page 14 in the Tips and Tricks handout. Hopefully, all of you have or have upgraded to the new Teaching Writing Structure and Style Seminar Workbook, page 83 to 108 is where we are. If you have not upgraded, then there is a great opportunity to do so, and you can click the live link at the bottom of the page 
to find out details about how to do that. It's nothing significantly new or different. It's just expanded and better. And, you know, they were over 10 years different in when I made the first one, when I made the second one. And you learn a lot in a decade of teaching something. So I think it's worthwhile upgrading if you haven't already. Tonight we are addressing Unit 6. We're going to talk about the recommended goals and materials, why the units leading up to 6 are important, the teaching procedure, and we'll go over the practicum session and also address where you may be with the stylistic techniques. And again, I'm very much hoping that any of you who have questions or problems or comments or complaints or anything that would be useful for us to discuss, as I said, part of the whole reason to do these live webinars is to address those things in, in real time. And I want to be sure that we do that. So we will save time at the end for Q&A. And hopefully, we will not leave without having every last question uh, answered. At least we will attempt to. Why do we do Unit 6? Well, one of the goals, of course, is for the student to learn how to use the classroom or home library, ultimately a main library, and be able to collect reading material on a particular subject of interest or research, to be able to take notes on that, and then fuse together those notes from multiple references and to write a summary of those notes. We hope that you have introduced the topic clincher paragraph idea in Unit 4 because we want to continue to use and refine that skill, that structural idea here in Unit 6. We also are hoping that the concept of the fused outline, which we do here, you know, with simple source text, will move out into uh, real research later on. And to some degree, whatever your grade level and experience level warrant to begin to help students document their references. Debbie is asking an interesting question. I'll shoot right off. Why is Unit 6 not attempted with third graders? And Debbie, the truth is, if you could easily do a Unit 6 type of thing with third graders, if you are familiar with our teaching process and you've been through it yourself, I think you'd have a good sense of how you can do it. We simply don't include that in some of our materials. For example, the Bible Heroes, which is aimed at the lower level. Although if you were using something like Things Fun and Fascinating or The Fables, Myths, and Fairy Tales, we do have a Unit 6, a very simple version of Unit 6 assignments in there. And so it really depends on the reading level. One of the problems with saying third grade is what does it mean? It means a child is approximately eight and a half, nine years old. And of course, you could have a whole room full of children that approximate age. And on one end, you'd find kids who are just starting to be able to decode independently. And on the other end, kids who've read all the Narnia books four times and can read anything and could easily handle it. So you just have to judge that on your own. We're trying to hit the middle. And also, Debbie, we're trying not to err on the side of going too fast, but rather err on the side of going a little bit slower. It, it's always safer to go a little bit slower than to overwhelm or frustrate a student and or their teacher. You've got plenty of time with a child who's eight and a half, nine years old. You've got plenty of time. And so we tend, you know, we have tended to say, okay, let's just say what's a reasonable pace through things. And then always qualify that by saying, you know, some children can easily go faster and do more, and other children need to take it maybe even a little bit more gently. Success is what we're hoping for, so that whatever you do, there's no frustration, there's a sense of accomplishment and success, and then what that breeds is a motivation to do more and work harder and continue. So I hope that answered your question. If not, you can write in a follow-up to that, and I'll probably see it. 
What we recommend, of course, is that you have, you can make or buy a Unit 6 poster. It's a very handy little poster. If you are in this webinar, it's very likely you have registered for the premium content on our website, in which case you can access our mini posters at no cost to you, print them out on your own, and in a homeschool environment, they're probably big enough. If you're in a classroom with uh, a co-op or a, a school where you have lots of children in one room, you might want to try and create a larger version of that, either by blowing up our image into something that could be printed larger or of course making your own. In the old days we used to just have poster board construction paper and felt markers and a yardstick and that's how we we got things then. Now of course we want everything to look very nice and so if you want to get that PDF you can do so and if you don't have the premium subscription you're certainly welcome to look into all the benefits that that offers. We also have a mini version of the Unit 6 poster on the Portable Walls product, which is one of our really popular items. We were giving them away during the 12 days of Christmas, and I have never yet met a student who doesn't see those portable walls and think, wow, this is going to be useful. Oh, I like it. Thank you so much. So you can take a look at that product as well. We want to also then choose source texts. We offer mini books. These are, if you've done the TWSS, you're familiar with the elephant mini books. In the student writing intensive, we use the whooping cranes, the dolphins, and the chimpanzees. Tonight, we're going to get a glimpse at the kangaroo rat set of mini books. And these are really preparatory in a way for using other materials. So once you've done a couple assignments or practices with the mini books, you might then like to expand to encyclopedia articles or of course other sources of electronic information and ultimately the library with real books. I think most of you remember doing some kind of note card project where you had to take say a hundred cards and you know put a fact or a statement on each one and then try to sort them and organize them into an outline and maybe got overwhelmed by that. This is kind of like a note card project in microcosm. And what we are hoping then is that all of the units that we've gone through so far are really building up to understanding this. So in unit one and two, what did we learn? How to write from an outline. And that is critical. That is absolutely critical. We keep the outline going through all nine units because here's the fundamental rule is if your students learn to separate the what they're going to write from the how they write it. In other words, think of the what first. Get that planned out. Get that organized. Get the content figured out. Then when they go to put that into prose, into clauses and sentences and paragraphs and all composition, they will do so much better. And that's why whether I'm teaching students who are in grade two or in graduate school, we always start with unit one and two, work with keywords and an outline. So you don't want to lose that. Even when you're in unit six, seven, eight, even when it's getting very advanced, a lot of students think, oh, I can figure out in my head. I'll think in advance. I know what to do. I don't need to make an outline. The truth is, if you make an outline, no matter what level you're working at, what you write will be better in the long run. Then Unit 4, we teach the topic clincher rule. Unit 5, we build on the thinking skills. And so Unit 6, we're moving forward basically with the Unit 4. But of course, the thinking skills in Unit 3 and 5 contribute to a better understanding of what you're trying to accomplish, a little bit more logical organization and focus, we hope, depending on the age and aptitude of the children. So if you were to compare Unit 4 and Unit 6, you see they're very similar, really. In Unit 4, you're choosing keywords from fact, not sentences. That's important to remember. If you have a long sentence, a compound sentence, blah, 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 and do, 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 you can take three words from each half of that sentence. That's a big difference between Unit 1 and Unit 4. You may even have a compound sentence with a long clause. You may have a very long sentence with three distinct and different facts, and you would take two to three keywords from each of those facts. So 
you may end up with one or two or three lines of notes in an outline from one sentence. So that's a differentiation between Unit 2 and 4. You're targeting a certain number of details per paragraph. That's going to continue into Unit 6. We will stick with the three words per fact maximum, although symbols, numbers, abbreviations are free. And at the high school level, I will usually go for four. And then, of course, organizing the information into topics that have a distinct paragraph model, topic, clincher, rule to repeat or reflect two to three keywords. So we went over all of that in Unit 4. In Unit 6, we're actually kind of expanding that because you're looking at more facts from more sources. So the funnel becomes a little more challenging. In Unit 4, you have one source, but in Unit 6, you're looking at multiple sources. So here's the poster. You see it, source one, two, three. There could, of course, be more, four, five, six. Some of my students right here, where I live in eastern Oklahoma, I have a little writing and research class. And we are doing the National History Day project. And I would encourage any of you out there who want to have an excellent opportunity to do some serious research, form it into either a paper or a website or a documentary or a display or even a, a little dramatic presentation, National History Day, nhd.org. It's a wonderful opportunity. I'm very impressed with the resources they have. And you can compete at the local level. And if you win at the local level, which in many places, ours in particular, competition is not stiff. You can move to state level. And then if you can win at state level or get in the first three places in your category, move to national level, go to Washington, D.C. and compete. I think it's a wonderful thing they're doing with National History Day. If you're going to get involved, now's the time because most of the local contests are in April, the state contests are in May, and the national in June. And our Unit 6 model is just perfect for helping students understand how to deal with multiple references. But what I was mentioning is that in, uh, in our local level, our, our coach who is experienced in national history is saying, you know, you can have 10, 12, 15 resources, references, sources that you list in an annotated bibliography so that you really get a very broad, broad sense of the thing. And then, of course, looking for primary resources. So if you've got uh, students in middle school age or high school age, I would strongly recommend you look into the National History Day as something that you could do with your class, with your students at home, whatever your situation is, as being a really worthy undertaking. But you got to get on it right away because time is moving fast, of course. And so we use then this filter where you kind of, you know, filter of the 10, 20, 50 facts you have, you put those into, you know, one outline. Then you get another book with who knows, 5, 10, 15, 100 facts, whatever. You filter those, put those into another outline, and then a third. And then from that, you create the fused outline and you choose the fact you need to write the paragraph on that topic. And then you would repeat that process for as many topics as your paper would need. If you're writing an essay for National History Day, then you probably want to jump ahead and look at Unit 8 and take a peek at the super essay or even the super duper essay because you need to get into the 5 to 10 page range, which would probably for most people be 10 to 20 paragraphs. But the process for the topic-based paragraphs is all the same, and that's what we're doing tonight. So what are we doing? First, find your sources. That's very important because if you don't have sources, how do you do multiple references? Then you would choose or identify topics in each source. Now, we're going to go through this together. We're going to do a little exercise together here in a few minutes. So 
if this is seeming a, a little bit rusty because it's been a long time since you listened to the TWSS or straight out confusing because you never did, don't worry, we're going to walk you through it. But you want to choose or identify topics. Topics are divisions within a subject. Then you would create a keyword outline for each topic from each source. Those would be the source outlines. And again, I'll show you a diagram of this. And then you would take your source outlines, you would choose one topic, fuse those into one single outline. That's what you're going to write from. And then repeat that again for additional topics under the heading of your subject, whatever that might be. Then, of course, you write the paragraph using the stylistic techniques and repeat that process. So hopefully that's pretty clear. If not, you can always review the TWSS. We're going to actually jump in and do one together. One of the things that uh, I, I, sometimes I get ideas and I am so envious that I did not think of that idea because I stole it from someone else. And this particular idea on organizing your Unit 6 information was actually shared with me by a school teacher, a grade three, <laughs> interesting to address that earlier question, a grade three teacher at a charter school I was working with in Colorado. They were implementing the syllabus very successfully and this grade three teacher had come up with a paper management system that I just thought was brilliant. And as I said, I'm, I'm just envious I didn't think of it myself. I would guess that third grade teachers have to become brilliant at paper management. Otherwise, they would spend most of their day trying to deal with paper management. But as you can see here, imagine, if you will, a large sheet of 11 by 17 paper folded in half, first hot dog or taco style, and then folded into thirds so that you then unfold it and have essentially six rectangular sections in your paper. Big enough for a student to write on, but small enough to fit on a desktop and be manageable. Then if you have three sources, and I said you could have two or four or more, you might have to adjust your folding for this purpose, but you can put then the source outlines in the top section and then you can fold, you can fuse into the middle section of the bottom, fold the thing in half so that you only see now the fused outline. And then on one side you could put useful information, perhaps your bibliography, quotes that you found would be useful, any other kind of peripheral information. And on the right you could make a little style checklist, the dress ups, openers, whatever you've learned so far. And you can then write using that half of the folded paper, which will still fit on the desktop, and write the whole paragraph from the fused outline, and then repeat that process for multiple topics, whether you need two or three or, or four or five or, or ten or a hundred, depending on the scope of your project. So that idea of folding that 11 by 17 paper, again, just absolutely brilliant. And I appreciate that idea that I got from that teacher there. One of the things that I, I caution people against is not getting in over your head. And this is easy to do. And this is dangerous as we teachers always want to get to the really sophisticated, independent, do-it-yourself, final product idea so quickly. And sometimes we don't notice that we haven't done enough modeling and assisting working together. I worked for a while, actually many years, a school district in Washington State, Pasco, Washington. It is one of the tri-cities, Pasco, Richland, and Kirk Kirkland, is it? And the Pasco School District has a highly transient, high second language population, a lot of Spanish speakers, Spanish is their first language. And I had this one teacher, I'd, I'd been there several years and taught all of their elementary school teachers, our whole system. And this was a grade five teacher and she loved what she was doing. She loved our system. She was trying a unit six 
deal and she heard that I was coming to Pasco and she contacted me and said, oh, please, 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 please come to my classroom and help us out. We're, we'd really love to have you and working in Unit 6 and I'm kind of struggling. And, and so I said, absolutely, I'd love to come. I'd be delighted to see what you're doing. Well, here's what, what the situation was. I showed up and here's a class of kids. It's a Spanish-English transition, a, a SET, SET class. So that most all of these kids, their Spanish is their primary language. English is a second language. They're learning it. They're working. But it does make things a little harder. She was in Unit 6 and had decided that all of the students should write a research project on a president. The only problem is that she had suggested everyone choose a different president. And the other problem was that the books that she had available were kind of a combination of a little classroom set of books on the presidents and then various library books and other books. But most of the books were all above the relatively easy decoding skills of these Hispanic kids. And they, they really couldn't easily scan or even read and understand the content of the books that they were trying to use. And to further exacerbate the challenge, all of the students were doing a different president. And she'd been at this a couple weeks, and everybody was kind of lost, and she was running around like crazy trying to help everybody at the same time. And it was it was difficult. And as soon as I saw what was happening, I kind of realized, okay, I'm going to talk to her and explain. You know, I will help you. You will get through this. But next year, do it a little differently. Next year, choose one president. You choose. You go find source texts that are at or below the reading level of these students, reading material that is appropriate to them. Copy off an identical set for everyone in the classroom and then walk them through. Find one topic on one president with everybody having the same source text and walk through this thing together. Do it on the board. Nobody has to do it all by themselves. Everyone can copy. You make the fused outline and you write it all up, you know, or let them write it up and you walk through pretty much the whole process together as a group. Then the next topic, you go find a second topic on this one president. Be sure they have source materials that are going to work, that, that everybody can read and understand. And maybe walk through half the process. Do the source outlines together and let them try the fused outline on their own. And then write it up. And then go to the third topic under this one president and say, OK, I think you got the hang of it. You guys who think you can do it on your own, go ahead. Anyone who wants to do it together, you can do it with me. Walk through the whole process. And, and use materials that you know are guaranteed to work. Do one president, three topics, write it up. And then, if you have any time or energy left over, go ahead and try to have everybody do their own president. And by the way, save those three topics for Unit 8 so that you can have the body paragraphs of an essay ready to go and just teach the adding on of the introduction and the conclusion to those body paragraphs. So anyway, she had kind of bitten off a little more than she could chew. Her intentions were excellent. But here's what, what I believe is that most of us as teachers, tutors, teaching parents, wherever we are, we, we tend to rely more on explanation than we should and less on demonstration than we should. And so you can learn from my experience in Pasco, Washington, and hopefully you will gain something from what we're going to do now, which is actually a demonstration. Let's try one together and see how this works. We do have to stop here because we're out of time for today. But because we don't want to leave you hanging too long, we'll go ahead and post the rest of the content later this week.
Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, you can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes or Stitcher, or just visit us each week at IEW.com slash podcast. Until then, on behalf of Andrew Poudois and the team at IEW, I thank you for the privilege of allowing us to partner with you on this educational journey toward better listening, speaking, reading, writing, and thinking.